to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. <laughs> Happy Halloween, everybody. <laughs> got some regrets. <laughs> I think everyone's got regrets that's tuning in right now. Um, yeah. I am never, ever, ever doing this again. Oh, very nice. Very nice. That just Welcome makes this in. a classic. Um, Taylor here. <laughs> oh, baby. Hanging out with Fat Thor and Ken. Yeah. Oh, Taylor Swift, Fat Thor and Ken. <laughs> Taylor, you're yeah. looking on the map. Oh, Yes. Putting Kelsey on the map. I'm yes. really thankful. There's uh, Fat Thor. Yeah. What's up? Who, uh, hey, la- good game last night. Last night. Thank he did, you. I he, got, got into the end zone. He did say, uh, they said, how do you fix the offense? <laughs> he said, that's not my job. <laughs> that was uh, Josh <laughs> Jacobs' reply. Oh, when he he was asked last oh, night? Oh, yeah. yeah. How do you fix this offense? He said, that's not my so, job. I don't know. That's not my job. <laughs> Devontae Adams. Oh, man. Welcome in, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> Got some hair in my face. Hello, everybody. There's Ken. <laughs> Just, I, I told Mike before the show, he figures yeah. out ways to be himself every year. Hey, got a, we, we, we have a business philosophy here of 80-20, running it through the filter. I do that continuously. You flipped it upside down this time. No, this is good. My wife's happy, thrilled. Kids are, kids are happy. Oh, kids are terrified. Yeah, I mean, I can't. I'm terrified. I'm and you know, I'm having a hard time looking at you. I don't blame you. <laughs> no, it was terrifying. That game last night. Yeah, yeah, and uh, goodness, terrifying for fantasy players too. Yeah. <laughs> well. It's not good. We've got um, the Ooh. five most popular terrifying tales from Monday Night Football. Jason, why don't you begin? All right. This this fella had 34 and a half point lead going into Monday night, and all that was left was Gibbs on the other side who scored 34.9 fantasy points. Mm. <laughs> oh, that's not good. <laughs> We've got the uh, golf end oh, of game man. kneel downs. Lost on uh, Bav lost on two kneel downs from Jared Goff to lose by point one. We have a Jason. <laughs> oh, that's on bad. On Twitter, Riley Patterson nailed the fifty-two yarder to put me up, but missed the field goal. The missed field goal gave me minus three to lose the week. <laughs> <laughs> There were a couple people out there who lost by less than a point, and they had Sam Laporta and watched him drop that last ball. Oh, no. <laughs> you did not win. And uh, I don't know if you guys saw this. Devontae Adams didn't have a very good night. I and uh, Hupel went into Monday night with the lead and lost by point one six. Oh, oh, my gosh. gosh. <laughs> yes. Yes. This is good work back there. Devontae out. I can't take I, this show. <laughs> now nah, we're good, man. I can't. Uh, I saw those two plays. Devontae Adams had a 98-yard touchdown wide open. Mm-hmm. Had a 60-yard touchdown wide open. The Jimmy Garoppolo. Uh, the to me the the 98-yard that was what was terrifying. Potential one was. I get it. Like he was, like he it was a, he was backed up in his own end zone. He was getting really pressured. So I understand that ball not being the best. I mean, you're a professional quarterback. You 10 for do 21, 126. The no other, touchdowns. The other miss, though, was incredibly egregious. And uh, on the other side, Gibbs went crazy. 26 yes. for 152. <sighs> Had a rushing touchdown. Laporta back into the end zone with 10 more targets. Yeah, and Gibbs had five receptions as well. Only 37 yards in the receiving game, but that's fine. Fully, yeah, I mean, f- five for 37 is. A really nice addition to a monstrous rushing line. Uh, we were 
at the unfortunate demise of the Diamondbacks last night. So I was at the World Series game. My sister was there, and she is furiously passionate about fantasy football. And she had conceded that she lost because the other, the opponent just needed Jacoby Myers to score four. Oh, man. Oh and Jacoby gosh. Myers had one catch for 19 yards. She ends up getting in the car after the D-backs lost and uh, had won. And Surprise. This, am I remembering right? Did uh, Kyle, maybe you saw this too, that the before that game, it's like sometime this week the Raiders did a full – Sit, team meeting full team meeting air yeah. all the laundry out how do we fix this and jimmy garoppolo's answer was 10 for 21 126 and a pick yeah the fury is real i mean uh, oh my gosh the coaching staff is on the hot seat yeah and i don't look Devonte adams season is terrible right now and it's not like he's not open on on most plays and they said this morning they're not going to trade him. And we got a trade deadline today, too. Deucer's Alley, not very dressed up over there. Nah. What's, what? What happened here? We lame. We lame. What happened We here? lame is right. Look at me. I got my belly out. Andy's got no beard. You lose. I've got a lot more than there. that. Well, hold on. Go back. Go back. So, looks like Brooks and Jeremy are – Josh is dressed up. As a really old man. Yeah, mm. you nailed it. At least my <laughs> nipples aren't showing. <laughs> Are my nips out? Uh, <laughs> sometimes. My belly's fat, out. Fat Thor. Um, <laughs> Al Borland and all black. Look, all right. this is crazy. I mean, it's yeah. cra we got a trade deadline today. We already had a defensive trade this morning. Um, let's talk news. News and notes from around the league. Presented by USAA Insurance. All right, Leonard Fournette. <laughs> Signed to the Buffalo Bills practice squad this morning. Jason, were you the one making the joke that they'd want to trade for Dalvin Cook? I was, yeah. I was saying that they, they really are. They got the old school in them. You doing okay over there with that beard? I'm doing okay. <laughs> it's weird. Yeah, it does. I, I feel like I can hear it. Yeah, I can hear your you beard. You can hear my beard. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, that sucks. Yeah. That's <laughs> what. Um. But uh, yeah, I, th I think that um, y you've got a team that wants a certain archetype of running back. They want a big beef boy mm -hmm. near the goal line. And um, it, th this will be interesting, though, the fact that he can catch the ball. He might be an upgrade over Latavius Murray, um, over Damian Harris. So maybe he comes in and is surprisingly involved, not necessarily right off the bat week one. But I could see, you know, looking back a month from now thinking, OK, I guess this was an important pickup. Clayton Toon, Cardinals rookie quarterback slated to start week nine. This, in my opinion, is really good if you have the Cleveland defense. Mm -hmm. And it really sucks if you have Trey McBride or Hollywood Brown or anybody because, I, you know, I think Clayton Toon is okay. But I think Josh Dobbs is better than Clayton Toon. And so is this – what's your thought with that that move? Because – I thought it was the weirdest move of all time. Stuff's weird there, man. It's so weird because what happened was the coach went and watched – the film. Well, at first he said immediately after the game, Kyler won't be starting next. Week. Right, and and I my my belief there is that that was always the plan. If you if you listen to him talk months ago, he said that they want to use that time when he's that twenty one day window for practice. They want to get him involved, let him have you know his kind of training camp. Um, and so it made sense to me that they they said like, oh, he's not going to be the starter next week. But then you go to the film. And you say, wow, Dobbs was unacceptably bad. He can't do what we're wanting him to do. He is no longer going to be our starter. So this means that they are doing this to win ball games. They're doing this to put their best player on the field. Well, then it's then it should be Kyler. Like I re I realize you want Kyler to have like more training camp, uh, more practice time, all that. But that's why it doesn't make sense. Why go to Clayton Toon? You're just downgrading. The I'm telling you, man, something weird is going on in Arizona. 
You're it, right. It's downgrading. I'm it's, looking at it. It's well. <laughs> I am what is weird in Arizona right yes, now. Yes, you are. Uh, um, new respect for the ladies out there that put the <laughs> that put the makeup on. Sweet mercy. The assault to my face this morning. How do you do it? I don't know. Um, sorry that I am in your ranks this morning <laughs> as well. Uh, Deshaun Watson may rest again against the Cardinals. This is the Clayton Tune. <laughs> Maybe P.J. Walker, maybe Dorian Thompson-Robinson. I love the fact that this was reported as he may rest again. <laughs> like, it was, it's not reported. He's still dealing with injuries. No, guys, he's real tired. He's he's just resting. Resting. He have a Mai Tai. <laughs> he probably needs to rest a little bit more. Same, bro. Uh, Matthew Stafford, day-to-day -day with a UCL sprain. The team attempted to sign John Wolford from the practice squad. Bucks then signed him to the active roster <laughs> and played defense. Oh, man. Uh, Tyson Bagent remains in line to start against the Saints. Start your Saints. Uh, I like Tyson Bagent and what he's trying to do, but this is still a good matchup for your Saints defense. Yes. Arthur Smith said, quote, I promise you, I'll come in on Wednesday and tell you who's starting. Yeah. there was. If you caught the, the little press conference short, sweet blurb there, it was Arthur. Arthur was asked directly, "If Desmond Ritter is healthy, is he the starter next week?" And it was, uh, uh, "Well, I'm gonna have to look at some things. You know, I'm not really sure. Got to do the best thing for the team." Because remember, Desmond Ritter concussion protocol during the game cleared. So the NFL said, like the NFL people said, "No, he's good to go. He does not have a concussion." And then. He was not put back into the game, and now Arthur Smith asked directly if he's healthy, is he going to start? Him and Hawing, the guy that Arthur Smith ferociously supported and said, anyone who says that Desmond Ritter is playing bad is part of, quote, toxic groupthink. One week later, maybe he's not our starter. I mean, everything I've heard has been health-related with the comments. Have you not seen Yeah, no, that? no, I, I get that. But that it's, they didn't put him back in because they wanted to keep him – healthy but I, right. I don't know how that works with but the that's the exactly concussion. that's exactly the point of either e either arthur smith is saying i don't trust the the nfl concussion protocol and we'll we'll see later on in the in the in his career how much that affects things either he doesn't trust that or he doesn't trust ritter can you not can you have like not a concussion but still like first be, be hurting would, and not want to play football yeah i would think so i think yeah. you can have a like a terrible, terrible headache. So we've got, uh, I mean, you got some games this week. You know, you're going to have a P.J. Walker, Clayton Toon battle. You're going to have a Jaron Hall rookie for the Vikings versus some combo of Ritter and Heineke. I think I heard it was 11 backups potentially starting this week at quarterback, which is why if you need to do This is why Gardner streaming... Minshew should have been a premium ad for any <laughs> NFL team. Yeah, a streaming uh, NFL uh, defense this week. You're in luck. There's There are plenty of good There's choices. There's too many. Yeah. That was today's news and notes brought to you by USAA Insurance. Learn more at usaa.com slash insurance. Put me in, coach. Well, this week, no CMC. 49ers on by. No Javante. Broncos on by. Lions. Jags also. Resting. With Deshaun Watson. <laughs> Watson's on by the team's playing. Yeah. Um, next week, Chiefs, Dolphins, Eagles, Rams. Coach, I don't know if you saw my schedule, but uh, I had a day of rest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, been in the books. What if I was in his contract? He gets two buys and everybody else gets one. Dude, uh, that's, that is next level negotiation. Mm. You're like, uh, I'm going to need a no trade clause and I'm going to need my second bye week. Um, running back waiver pickups. Who's at the tippy top of your list this week? I mean, we have waiver wire rankings up on the site, thefantasyfootballers.com. You can see where each of us individually are placing guys, but give me your top few names. So uh, I'll jump in. My top name this week, it is Zach Charbonnet, uh, rookie of the Seattle Seahawks. Now, I mean, he came in and had a an okay game, but it was more of what's going on with the timeshare of Kenneth Walker, who was dealing with his own injury. So maybe it was simply that it was Ken Walker was banged up during the practice, so they in, they uh, installed more stuff for Zach Charbonnet. But he's still a second-round rookie pick who 
Charbonnet was himself hurt. Like before Charbonnet got hurt, it did look to me like they were working, they were ramping up the timeshare, and it was going to be a lot. <coughs> Kenneth Walker at the top of it, but Charbonnet was going to get a lot of action, and he is, I keep profiles as a pass catcher and a goal line running back. So I think that he he's my top add at the running back position. Uh, for me, <clears throat> it's Daryl Henderson, Darnell Anderson. Yeah, Daryl Henderson, um, rostered in a lot of leagues along with Chuba Hubbard, but if he's not in yours, you know, three for fifty-four in the passing game last week. Do you have? They're gonna have to lean on the running game that, without Stafford if he misses. That's my. That's the tiebreaker for me for Henderson and Charbonnet is that who like the quarterback play for the Rams. If it's if if it's subpar, that's gonna really affect Henderson. And Royce Freeman was getting work. Royce Freeman got a goal line touchdown as well. Yep. So I I do like Henderson, but that's that's what's splitting the difference for me. Yeah, I, I was surprised to see that he's still available in in the majority of leagues on Yahoo. Like that this is a player who should be 100% rostered right now. Um he is involved in all facets of the game, the receiving work, um in around the goal line. I know Royce got the touchdown last week, but yep. he's still he's still getting opportunities. So in the matchup if you have to play one of these guys the uh the Green Bay Packers have been really really bad uh on the ground over the last 5 weeks you adjust for schedule they're giving up an average of plus 5 fantasy points over that player's average and so you know if i've got to start a guy Charbonnet's matchup against Baltimore uh, I, I i don't know that you could start i feel like Charbonnet is still a stash right now um that you're hoping has like a breakout and and has a lot of value but to me he's not a guy that i can play yet there will be an RB3 discussion around Amari DiMarcado this week, Arizona Cardinals rookie running back. It's not a good matchup. He's on the road against Cleveland. Might have a rookie quarterback. But had 20 carries last week. So, you know, when you talk about a spot start that might be able to give you 10 points, to me that is, um, you know, he's in contention, under 50% yeah. rostered. I'm not personally adding Leonard Fournette unless there's one situation. If I had James Cook, I would add Fournette the same way I would have put Latavius Murray on my roster. Okay, insurance. But I don't foresee – I mean, look, this is a long, multi-year situation with running backs in Buffalo. And to me, Leonard Fournette in a timeshare is not going to be the answer to the multi-year question of can I get any fantasy value out of Buffalo's backfield. So I just can't foresee a world where Fournette – like I don't think they're signing Fournette to dispose of Murray, to be honest. I think they're signing Fournette in part because Damian Harris is out for the rest of the year. Right. And they were using both of those guys behind James Cook. It, it's just – it's not good for James Cook, even if it's only 10% not good for James Cook. And I just don't see any world where Fournette gets started this year sans injury. Yeah, the, I, I guess the only way that I disagree there a little bit is that I could see him turning into the goal line back. Uh, we know that's not going to be James Cook, but this is a good offense. And if you have to – you know. Mike has had to plug Latavius Murray in I in have. a start uh, this season because, you know, they're, they're, if you're big and you're on this offense, you got a chance at falling into the end zone. I think that he'll have value in that way. Um, but I, I do agree in principle, this is probably going to be a three-way timeshare where you're just splitting up. You're splitting it up too much. Well, and to give you some credit on that take uh, – I don't think anybody can take me seriously today on anything I'm saying if you're on YouTube. Yeah, we so. got it. We got it. Oh, 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 oh Taylor. <laughs> Taylor, you lost the hat. Lost my fedora, guys. How do people keep those on? Uh, smaller heads. Mm, they okay. have smaller heads okay. than I do. Less wig. Yeah. What? <laughs> I grew this out. Plus, you had a fedora week. You should know, I guess. Yeah. Um, Devin Singletary <laughs> had 10 more carries. I think he needs to be rostered. Yeah, he does. Uh, spot start capability. Zeke, I mean, we brought up, like, Ezekiel Elliott is not a desirable start. But at the same time, you know that if either of those guys get hurt, the other one's going to take over in full and is capable of catching the football. Uh, Royce Freeman should still be rostered on mm -hmm. teams. I mean, he had nine carries for the Rams. But, you know, and Justice Hill, you know, the matchup against Seattle, Justice Hill catches the football a little bit. Yeah, we had four for 40 this past week. Gus Edwards was the headline, but it 
the all the touchdowns, well, not all, because Mark Andrews got one, but a lot of the touchdowns for the Ravens, they just, it went the way of Gus Edwards this past week, but it, the the snap share was really not any different than it has been. It just worked out this way for Gus. You dropping Miles Sanders or Damian Pierce for any of the names above? Um, Like Daryl no. Henderson over Miles Sanders. Uh, yeah. that, one, that one I would do. Yeah, I, I would do that one right now, but I still am not looking to drop Miles Sanders. I think by the end of the season, I mean, right now Miles Sanders is dealing with this groin injury, and it's clearly affecting. He, he was barely involved, but I, I think towards the end of the season, he will get back to being the, the, the primary ball carrier. Chuba, though, he had a, had a down game last week. He might hit waivers when they run. Uh, tomorrow, and I think that would be a mistake because as a spot start, yes, I, you know, sometimes we 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 get too caught up in one bad performance. He he should be started again this next week, and a it, you know as as a spot starter, not a must start, but certainly um, capable against the the Indianapolis Colts. Any other m mentions here at the running back position? I agree with the Charbonnet take. I mean, I think that that's one where there is tremendous potential down the line, especially with the injuries that Walker's dealt with. I, I would just jump in and say we are getting to that time of year where if you know you have an insurance running back, you you might want to look to add them. Like, uh, like if you just have you know a wide receiver or something that you've been waiting for to have a breakout and, and you don't see the path, the – the auxiliary numbers, like the targets per route run, the the route participation, that stuff's not going in the direction you want. There's guys out there who are interesting. Of like <laughs> Elijah Mitchell is is available. Seeing it looks like in about seventy percent. Tank Bigsby, it's been not what we thought it would be, but Travis Etienne has been incredible. What if Travis Etienne gets hurt like Tank mm -hmm. Bixby is the next man up so this, like last game where he twisted his ankle well he he was able to to recover quickly well, I, no I'm just saying it happens quick. yes yeah yeah but, but this is and and if if like we got news you know right now it's like breaking news Travis CTN uh pulls groin in practice Tank Bixby would skyrocket mm -hmm. so these are the players you need to be proactive knowing that they don't really help you right now but it's based on your roster construction now is the time to start leveraging those those high value insurance running backs all right quick break back with wide receivers all right we're getting into the wide receivers and look guys uh i don't know if you noticed but my my guys are pretty good this week <laughs> <laughs> i mean jameer gibbs everybody Hey. Can I get an applause hey. for Jameer Gibbs, anybody? Okay. Yeah, Let me right. do that. Thank you. And uh how do you how do you feel about the timeshare now? It it's gonna change a little bit. Okay. I do. I don't I, I think it's it's mostly gonna be fine for Monty when he gets back, but there's two factors that I think need to come in play when you look at the upside of Gibbs. One, when a when he puts it on display for a couple of weeks in a row, right? You're earning the trust of your coaching staff. So that's going to be maybe that's 10% of a difference than before the injury. Uh, the second one is just whether or not there is any, you know, is Montgomery going from unhealthy to healthy instantaneously? That's the other factor. Or is this going to be something that takes, you know, is the team going to be earnestly trying to help prevent Monty from being hurt for a third time? Right. This is not the – I mean, two times this year, Monty has missed time with an injury. And so it would make logical sense or it would make rational sense to I share – I don't know if they're – I mean, they might be too high T for rational. Let me give you an example. Let's say if a guy can get hurt with, let's say, 30 carries. <laughs> Maybe you give him 20 carries and there's 10 to go around. That's – I mean, this team is super committed to the run. Yeah, they we, are. We Goodness saw that last gracious. night. So I think that I do think that the the floor has been raised for Jameer Gibbs. So, and I think that the floor may have lowered a little bit for Montgomery, but I I'm not that worried. Okay. Was that uh, fair? Yeah. And yeah, then uh yeah. yeah, another one of my my guys, just classic Andy hitting it on everything. <laughs> Jahan Dotson, 10 <laughs> targets, 8 for 108, almost a 20% target share over the last 2 weeks. Just you know, bringing it when you need it. Week seven, week eight, classic my guy territory. Mm, well, this nice. was 
Like uh, Curtis, uh, let's see, where did Curtis Samuel do? Yeah, Curtis got hurt in this game. So it was the the Manders look at and they said, regrettably, we have to turn to Jahan Dotson after Curtis Samuel's superstar carrying our offense. We can't go to him anymore, so mm -hmm. let's let's go somewhere else. Let's go to that first round wide receiver we drafted. It was funny. There was a play. We'll give him a chance. There was a play in the in the game Mike and I were watching. <laughs> And it was like, I couldn't tell who, because, you know, we, we got nine TVs up. I, I look over, and some wide receiver for the Manders caught the ball and just was so fast, looked so good. I was like, oh, who's that? Oh, oh, yeah, that's Jahan Dotson. That's their first-round wide receiver who looked so good. Wait, did you hear what happened? It, they were they were at practice, and then the coach, actually, the enemy, he looked over. He said, who's that holder? <laughs> <laughs> Can we get that holder and run, have him run some routes? Yeah. I'm going to give that guy an opportunity. Let's give this guy Incredible. a chance. Um, but for waiver purposes, <laughs> I am interested in Jahan Dotson. I, he is a very talented wide receiver. Obviously drafted in the first round for a reason. Looked great as a rookie. Has looked good the last two weeks. There was a reason you liked him coming into the season. We can't just allow you know, what happened for a stretch run of bad games to say, well, Jahan Dotson's career is over. It's not. He's a really good wide receiver. He's available in at least half of your leagues. And if he is coming on, coming into his own, um, the the Manders defense is now getting worse. They yeah. made a, a trade, uh, got rid of Sweat. So I, I think that... Uh, I wish I could do that right now. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, I think Jahan Dotson is probably my number one or number two pickup at the wide receiver position. We mentioned it yesterday, Demario Douglas, uh, wide receiver for the New England Patriots, rookie, seven targets, five for 25, not that impressive, but a 24.3% targets per route run for the year. They like utilizing him. He gets rushing opportunities. You know, you don't like that offense very much, so it is a dart throw every week you play him. But, I mean, you're, you're staring down a time of year with bye weeks, with injuries, even like peripheral players you just recently picked up, like Josh Palmer. Well, is Josh Palmer going to play next week? Right. You know, do you go Demario Douglas or do you go Quentin Johnston? You know, these are the types of decisions you may have to make in a first or second flex spot. I think I'm super in on Demario Douglas. I I really do. Like I I might take him over Jahan Dotson. The the drum beat for him has been excellent. What we've seen on the field has matched it. He's looked good when given the opportunities. He hasn't had as much opportunities. And now Kendrick Bourne is a torn ACL. So that he's he's gone, and I think that they're going to work Douglas in more and more as a rookie. They and need Parker's him. Parker's in concussion protocol, right? Yeah. Uh, yep. Yeah. And so, and Juju he is, doesn't want to be, but they they said yes, right. you are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, and Juju has just not looked like the same, and I don't know that he'll ever be very relevant again. So to me, this is a player who has, you know, he he checks pretty much all of the boxes, um, other than. Mac Jones. Let me ask you this. They call him Pop, by the way. That's what I was going to say. Does it make you more or less interested in him knowing that the New York or the New England media calls him Pop? Pop, Pop? Douglas. Pop Douglas. Hmm. More or less interested? I'm a little more interested. Okay. I like it. Pop goes the weasel. <laughs> okay. That's right? true. I was going to go Is that true? Dirt, dirty Pop. Mm, dirty Snap, pie. tackle, Pop. Pop. Okay. Do we got any more? Pop, lock, and drop it. <laughs> Deucer's Alley have anything to contribute? You guys you guys got them all. Oh, yeah. Uh, look, yeah. Can't pop off with anything? Mm. Oh, yeah, go ahead. Boston. Yeah, not good. Uh, look, well, the, so the, the, the Detroit Lions are going on, on the bye week, and before last night's game, Andy, we in the, when we were talking about how we have our waiver rankings, yes. you, you, were, uh, you, were, you were like, I'm, no, I'm still interested in Jamison Williams. Yeah, and even with the bye week, so but at this point, after seeing last night's game, where it was it was still the Jamison Williams experience, one real boneheaded play, then another good catch. I mean, his his line at the end was not good, but they weren't. It was it was a strange game. Still, only played forty percent of yeah. snaps. So Jamison Williams, or now huge, who with uh, Joshua Palmer's knee. Why, well, if I if they're both there. Yeah, I mean, I don't think Huge can do anything against the Jets this week. And then the following week, it's Jamison Williams against the Chargers, which I like, or Quentin Johnson against the Lions, so they'll face each other. If I have Jamison Williams, I'm not dropping him to pick up Huge or spinning fab. Okay. If I have Quentin Johnston, I'm probably not going to do the opposite. Um, Certainly not heading into the Lions bye week. I would be looking at Jamison Williams as a 
Drop it like it's hot candidate. Somebody that people are letting go of after last night's performance where they didn't need to throw the football. Thanks. I mean, Jason should be thrilled that they didn't need to throw the football. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. Because he was – I think he was on watch for six points in the second half for Amon Ra. Yeah, I was dead in the you beginning were. of that game. That 44-yard reception super early from Amon Ra. I'm like, well, I'm toast. And then they just kept getting stopped over and over and over in the red zone. So, so yeah, many dodged a bullet, but yeah, that's my philosophy. Rashid Shahid, um, dart throw, no fab, pick him up, throw him on your bench. That's my view on him. Clear Shakir, I'm not chasing six for 92 for Shakir either. Uh, yeah, I'm not. That was a game plan thing to start the game. He didn't really get involved over the second half of the game. It was like the first quarter. I think if you're looking for a start, you know, some of these guys are different, right? Like, huge, you're not starting. Jamison Williams, you can't start. But if you need someone to start this week, to me, I'm looking at the Cowboys wide receivers, both Brandon Cooks and Michael Gallup. The matchup against Philly, I expect a lot of points scored. I expect it to be not on the ground um, for the Cowboys. And Dak has looked so good. So, to me, that's 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 a – I would much rather start – Brandon Cooks this week than Rashid, uh, Rashid Shahid. Okay. Yeah. I uh yeah, you you need the bomb to succeed for yeah. Shahid. A lot of people want to know if they can drop Christian Watson and Tank Dell. Tank Dell since the last three games since he had a breakout performance, which was, you know, a sixty eight yard touchdown. One for sixteen, three for fifty seven, three for sixteen. Tampa, Cincy, Arizona on the docket. I I'm holding on to Tank Dell in, in the context well. yeah. of this waiver. I uh, agree. Yeah, it was uh, it was a it was a really really down game for the Texans last week. <laughs> C.J. Stroud didn't look like his early season self, and I, I'm I'm gonna hold for sure. And I'll I'll throw one more name out there because uh, we're transitioning to the tight end position. Uh, because to me, Trey McBride is a is an absolute must pickup at this point, based off of what he did in his first game with no Zach Ertz. My belief that like it might be a real crappy week against the Cleveland Browns with Clayton Toon, there is a chance that he's okay with if if Toon just locks in and gives him a bunch of volume. <clears throat> but my belief is that Kyler will be back the next week, and that makes Trey McBride an absolute must pick up. And I think that Michael Wilson is interesting as well. If you don't need someone right now and you just have that a what, spot on your Michael bench. Wilson or Quentin Johnston, uh, ooh, pro I. Man. Michael Wilson. I yeah. I, I think it might be Jameson Michael Wilson. Williams, Michael Wilson. Michael, Michael Wilson. Wilson. See, I'm Jameson on that side. I think when they need to throw the football, you might see better better things. But yeah, the team is But it's but Michael Wilson's already like a full time. I'm just player. not the, I'm not as convicted as you guys that Kyler Murray is out yeah, there anytime no, I, soon. I get it. I think that there's a thirty percent chance that he just stays on the pot. So interesting. I this team is weird. You know, they are they are definitely weird. You made a decision to get rid of Colt McCoy and trade for Josh Dobbs because you knew Clayton Toon was not remotely ready to be a professional quarterback. Sure, but he's now had you know what eight weeks of in season practice. Mm -hmm. I yeah that that's uh, not going to do it for me. Yeah, I I, I know <laughs> Miles I, Garrett introduction to Clayton Toon. Oh, it, yes, there it's going to be a really bad. Honestly, week. I'm thrilled as a Cleveland defensive manager. Thrilled. Because Dobbs has massive escapability, massive uh, intangibles to get outside the pocket, avoid sacks. Clayton Toon is going to memorize the Cleveland skyline. I mean, he is going to understand every where every cloud is. Yeah, I I, I agree completely. But I I am very I know I know we we have disagreement here. But I'm very confident that Kyler starts against Atlanta. Trey McBride. Uh, I echo everything Mike said. He might be my number one pickup of the week at, at all positions because this is a player who who has been talented, hasn't been able to be on the field. Now Zach Ertz is on IR and just had a, a – not just like a, a, hey, that was a nice game. That was a game that most tight ends can't do. And so there is a chance here that this is the beginning of Trey McBride's breakout at a tight end, you know, there's so well, many I, needy tight end teams. Let me put it to the test. The world of disappointing tight ends versus Trey McBride. Okay. Are you exchanging Dallas Goddard no. for Trey McBride? No, not Goddard. Are you exchanging Evan Ingram 
for Trey McBride. Mm. I would, I, if I had Evan Ingram, I will pick up McBride, but I'm not dropping Ingram to get him. Are you exchanging Cole Komet for Trey McBride? Yes. yes. Kyle Pitts. Yes. yes. Logan Thomas. Yes. yes. Darren Waller. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Just because of the injury, you probably have Jake to. Ferguson. No, Jake Ferguson. I still have ahead of McBride right now. I I think that what we've seen the last couple of weeks with him and Dak has been it's been a so good if, thing. then if Ferguson is on waivers you're picking him up over yes. McBride McBride's okay. on pace for 150 141 targets when you look at the last three weeks which included two weeks with Ertz uh so McBride is tippy top of the list Taysom Hill Jake Ferguson both not rostered in 100 percent of leagues or even close to it David Njoku are we on to something I don't Maybe. think so uh, it, the it it depends on who the quarterback is. Like if if PJ Walker is the quarterback, and you need a a, a bye week replacement against Arizona, I I think that's very fine. Like if he's, Dorian he's Thompson Robinson is the quarterback, then no, then absolutely. Do you bent? Are you laughing at my hair? Yes. I mean, I am eating this hair. <laughs> it is just. Yeah, Papa Josh, you like uh, what you see? It's just ridiculous. Um. If Dorian Thompson Robinson is the quarterback for the Cleveland Browns, are you even starting Amari Cooper? No, no, no. I'm not starting. I'm not starting any could pass you, catchers. Could you go and cry if oh, you had yeah. Amari Cooper? Yeah. Oh, for I sure. I think you should. I, my two league of record wide receivers are Devontae Adams and Amari Cooper. Oh, oh. goodness gracious! Oh. Isn't, that, isn't that just a real Man, treat? That is a treat for me. I, I can't imagine that the I, I get the, that was a really good combo last year. The the Cleveland Browns. They, I know that they were talking about this because they said they're not committing yet to Walker being the quarterback. Why? It, but that's Why? that's what I'm saying is you saw the rookie play, Don't. and it was not just like, oh, man, there's some stuff there. He, he made some mistakes. No, it was it was awful. The only he way you not lose ready. to Arizona is if you start Dorian Thompson-Robinson. Correct. Now, that being said, he didn't get like that whole week of practice, right? Uh, he got – some he got some of it yeah so but even with a full week of practice he's just he's been not ready he's been practicing now <laughs> uh trey mcbride ferguson hill najoku who i think you know he's had big games in the past i'm not chasing it logan thomas back into the end zone i'm very comfortable with logan thomas sure as a spot start um thoughts on michael mayer mike uh it was it was on halloween yeah it was uh disappointing last night i had a i had a parlay where i just needed a little bit and Mayer was running like all the routes, all the routes for the tight end position. And then, then, um, uh, uh, Hooper ran, runs like a couple and he's the one who gets a couple receptions quick. It was like, what are we doing here? Give me your defensive waiver order. What's your favorite matchup of the week? If they're out there. Oh, Cleveland for sure. If they're out there, but they're, um, they're pretty rare. I, I would, I would love them. I would love the saints against Chicago and against a Hobbit. Um, <laughs> That that would be very nice. Th those would be my like two Chargers number one pickups. Uh, the Chargers uh, against uh, Zach Wilson. Zach Wilson's kind of got it together. The Chargers defense has been not that great. They can get beat on the ground. Brees should have a good game. So I I wouldn't be as bullish on them as I would be a couple others. Maybe the Packers. Uh, we don't know if Stafford's playing or not. But if Stafford, he's got to be doubtful. If if Stafford doesn't play, I think you can roll that way. The Vikings as well. The Vikings defense has been surprisingly really good I worry I, I would have been much more bullish if Kirk Cousins was there because right. now you worry about like short fields and yep. that stuff that their defense can't handle but against the Atlanta Falcons uh where right now we still don't know who's going to play quarterback <laughs> uh I think you could play them uh, my low rostered option this week would be the Giants on the road against the Las Vegas Raiders it oh was, my gosh that's a home run it was not and they're the number we have is six percent rostered so they're they should be available. Should be the six percent I told to pick them up last <laughs> yeah. week. But it's like if, if Jimmy Garoppolo was terrible, he took I think six sacks, had the had the interception. So the the Raiders are broken right now, and the Giants' defense is really heating up. If I was Devonte Adams, oh man, I would bring in cash the rest of my salary <laughs> and slam it on the desk and say, "Get me <laughs> out of here." Well, he's got a couple hours. Yeah, it's when is the what is the time today? I think it's in the afternoon. Yeah, I for think us. it's one, one o'clock our it's, time. So it's we got so three hours. Any him. new news? Nah, it's so brutal at brutal. Brutal, brutal, brutal. Oh, brutal. I thought you said brutal, brutal. 
four Adams. I think he did. I look brutal today. You, yes, you, look, do. you look bro. Because awful. Adams wants Adams wants to be a Raider. Like, nah. this, uh, that's, he wants to be a Raider. He wants to win. Did you watch that's the interview right. with him and Rich Eisen last week? Uh. He was I'm so sure. candid about everything. But I, mean, I, I thought I saw a clip of him saying, like, I, no, I chose to come he here. This he is did. where I want to be. And, and I'm saying that the he had personal feelings of this. This is the franchise. That, this is the shield I want to wear. He wanted to wear but that shield. so bad. He wanted to wear that shield so he was close to his family. And he wanted to wear it so that he could play with Derek Carr. And he's not. he, do, he understands that he made right. that commitment yeah, yeah. to the team. But I'm telling you. If you gave him a ticket and you just said it's a random NFL franchise, all you have to do is get on this plane. He might take the chance. He's getting on the plane, <laughs> man. I would want out. I mean, Josh McDaniels, listen, you suck. He will be. And I, that's out. the nicest thing I've ever said about him. He he's not kind of good. He sucks. I started thinking about this this morning. If you want to go take a nice gander at the Belichick universe at this moment in time, you will find a jobless Patricia, a losing Belichick, a non-offensive genius in McDaniel, a Bill O'Brien that's been fired and not finding his way. The The circle of Belichick right now is... Including Belichick. Including <laughs> Belichick is very full of L's. The Raiders... Have not hit their implied total once. I believe they have something like two off. Sheesh. They've never hit two offensive touchdowns in a week or something. Bad times. Bad times. Oh, there there will be a coaching change there yes. very soon. Will will this be the this won't be the end of McDaniels though? Because the Gazes and the McDaniels, they get like tenure. I mean, Gaze is coaching again. Wait. Oh, sorry, not Gaze. Yeah, I was um, like, where? Gaze is not in the NFL. why am I uh failing here? Uh Bill O'Brien? No. He's the offensive coordinator for the Chiefs again. Oh, Nagy? Nagy. You know, Nagy Nagy was uh the center of ire and he's back in business. Sure. But McDaniels but, will be in New England. Uh, I don't know if Bill will take him back this time. Maybe. Yeah, I don't know. I just <laughs> it just he disgusts me. Yeah, no, I I it's it's a really rough situation. He would have been a much easier costume today. He was pretty good when he was cheating. I know. <laughs> He cheated those first six games in Denver. Yeah, and they and they, they looked really all. good. Yeah. <laughs> Full stream ahead. I'm gonna let you two start this segment. We're looking at streaming quarterbacks. I far and away like your two options way better than mine. Yep, for sure. So, Mike, why don't you all right. lead off? I will jump in, and I will lead it off with saying, unfortunately, the best three streaming matchups this week are Zach Wilson against the Chargers, uh, Mac Jones versus Washington, and the third, which Andy is going to use, but it is it, – you're going to need some some steel underpants for it, but I'm going with Derek Carr. Send in the car. Send in the car. That always works out. Yeah, it, it's, it's it's worked, worked out, out for the last month. It's worked out for a little bit here. Maybe he can – I mean, him and Chris Olave need to go have a fro-yo, sit down, hash it out, and figure it out because they need to work together. But over the last month, the floor has been there, averaged the fourth most passing yards in the NFL, uh, 287. He's been a top 15 quarterback four straight weeks. And the Bears, it's, it's a good matchup, the fifth most fantasy points allowed to quarterbacks. I'm going to go with Gardner Minshew this week. He is uh, in a very winnable matchup against Carolina. Carolina is allowed the third most points per drive in the NFL. And we, we keep talking about what we are loving, what we are seeing from the Indianapolis Colts, the pace of play. the They are destroying overs. Um, they're six of eight weeks. They've hit the over, and the, the line keeps moving up every week, and they're, you're still, they're still hitting the overs. So um, I think Gardner, you know, in his four full games, he's averaged 41 passing attempts. You know he can run the ball. He's had a couple rushing touchdowns. Had 27 fantasy points two weeks ago. So um, against Carolina, I, I I would be okay starting Gardner. Can I get one of those Halloween sound effects after I reveal my full stream ahead? Uh, Bryce Young. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, look, the matchup. It's all about the matchup. The Colts, 
the games have hit the over in six of eight weeks. Jason is starting the other side of it in, in Gardner Minshew or streaming the other side. Bryce Young's coming off his best game as a pro. Uh, good passer rating, higher yards per attempt, higher completion percentage. And there was there was a change in their offensive play caller. So the fact that we had we knew that information and then we saw an improvement for Bryce Young, that's a positive thing. There you go. Uh, that is going to do it for today's show. Tomorrow we have Hungry for More, the Thursday night preview, the midseason review, and um, uh, I'll – I'll be paying the price for my decisions today. <laughs> so you can tune in for that as well. For weeks. For a, no, I don't know about weeks. Look, any stubble. Have you <laughs> just the small I might paint it on. Yeah. I mean, even the smallest amount of stubble will save what is happening right now. I know a lot of people sleep at night. I'm gonna be like clinching, trying to get the follicles just to emerge. Squeezing. Have you this. purchased some kind of hair growth serum? Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, like yeah. Red I, dead? I, yeah. Oh, I bought it all. <laughs> We got to fix this pronto. Thank you for tuning in. Have a happy Halloween, a safe Halloween, and we'll be back with you tomorrow. Farewell. Goodbye. <laughs> Thank you for I love you, to Travis. another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.